Uh, good morning to everyone. Uh, but before to start, I really would like to thank you, to thank the organizer uh, of this event and for inviting me. And it's really great to be here. It's the first uh, live meeting I'm having uh, uh, after a very long time, so it's, it's particularly special today. And um, so I'm Marco Lorenzi. I'm a, a researcher at INRIA Sofia Antipolis in the Epion Research uh, Group. And what I'm bringing today is uh, somehow my experience as a researcher that uh, is trained and has an experience in uh, uh, biomedical data analysis and uh, why actually federated learning is becoming uh, uh, so relevant uh, for people like me. Uh, so we have been uh, uh, developing methods for analyzing complex data, biomedical data, medical images, for many years, but uh, in the past uh, few years, we have experienced uh, a sort of revolution under different aspects. First, uh, uh, from the data aspect, data is becoming larger and larger, more heterogeneous, models are becoming more and more complex and very data hungry. But on the other side, also in the last uh, year, uh, data is becoming more and more uh, concerning, uh, especially concerning the ethical aspect, access, uh, uh, privacy, and so on. Uh, today there are very important regulations around what we can do with data, where we can store data, and so on. So this has dramatically changed the way we conduct research and uh, actually brought uh, important problems to our daily uh, life, daily routine. And uh, that's where actually uh, federated learning has becoming, or is actually currently becoming one of the uh, main paradigm for a biomedical data analysis uh, project. Uh, you can see, uh, it's a very quick uh, research on PubMed, but how the word federated learning actually uh, exploded in the publication in the past four years. Uh, and uh, more and more people are interested into this, more and more group around the world, because uh, federated learning offers the opportunity of dealing with uh, uh, the centralized uh, training of, of models. So we solve one of the critical aspects of the data, which is, uh, uh, where data should uh, be located. So we have, we leave the hospital with their data, we can provide and guarantee that uh, at least from that side, things are safe. And so the, the, the paradigm of federated learning is indeed, uh, well, what I, I believe that many of us are already aware of, which is uh, uh, we can train local models, every center acts as a, as a client, and then we aggregate uh, parameters somehow uh, and this is done by a central entity, so we usually work in the star-shaped uh, configuration. And then uh, once the parameters are aggregated, they are sent back to the clients that are using the parameters in initialization for a new uh, uh, optimization round. And we iterate on and on. And there are guarantees that uh, under certain assumption, with certain kind of model aggregation, things go well. So we converge somewhere and somewhere is meaningful. So this uh, uh, paradigm, let's say the, the, the most, like the classical approach that implements this paradigm is called federated averaging, which was proposed uh, a few years ago by McMahon and, and colleagues, so people coming from Google, in which uh, basically uh, the federated learning problem is uh, uh, formulated as a joint optimization. So we have different uh, clients, each of them with their cost function, fi, and we want to optimize the aggregation of uh, the different cost function according to some weights, PI, where the weights PI are the relative importance of the clients. It could be, for example, how many data points the clients have. And uh, the way to solve uh, this, uh, this problem iteratively basically is, well, it requires to draw from the uh, classical literature on uh, distributed optimization. And uh, it turns out that uh, this can be solved by it iteratively averaging, actually, the, uh, the weights, so the parameters which are computed at each, uh, uh, at each client side, and uh, averaging respectively uh, to, the, uh, to their weights. And uh, also, in the original paper of McMahon, they are already proposing to not uh, to use all the clients, but to sample only some of them to speed up things. And uh, so it means that for the ones that we are not sampling, uh, so that they are not involved in the current optimization, we just actually carry the uh, uh, old weight, so the global weight. So this scheme has been proved in several ways under several assumptions to work. And, uh, but but uh, 
although it, uh, there are guarantees that this converges and leads to like a local optimum, uh, it has been shown already in the original paper and then so on in many other publications that there, is a, there are important pitfalls. The pitfall, the, the main weakness of federated learning is heterogeneity. So already in the original paper, we can see that when they were increasing heterogeneity in the data distribution uh, and so on, uh, the, the, the convergence actually was much impacted, much slower. And uh, the heterogeneity means, uh, can mean very many things actually. It's a, it's a concept which is uh, very broad because it can be heterogeneity of uh, distribution of features across clients, of labels, or also conditional distribution. So given the same label, the feature might not look the same across clients. And this is very, very, very common. And I, I invite you to actually t uh, take a look at this very nice uh, review from uh, Kairos and colleagues in which they describe very nicely, actually, all this kind of heterogeneity. And the other issue of federated averaging that is, uh, is very slow, because it requires, actually, clients to compute things, and we have to wait, actually, that they are done with their job. And uh, there was already this concept of sampling only a few of them, but the problem with sampling, in the way they propose it, that uh, there is no guarantee that uh, this sampling procedure brings, actually, to an unbiased solution. So it's solving, actually, the original problem of federated learning. And so how to deal with this? Uh, so this is one of the main aspects uh, when a researcher works in federated averaging, uh, in uh, federated learning, is to guarantee that actually we are uh, doing things properly and we are representing clients properly. In biomedical application, this is imperative because biases can dramatically affect the, the quality of a model, for example, predictive model of certain pathology. So we have been working on, on this aspect, starting from the seminal work of Lee et al., which is the uh, work introducing FedProx, in which they introduce uh, the concept of unbiased sampling. So basically, we assume that uh, uh, at every round, we can sample a subset of clients uh, according to some uh, distribution. So we have some new aggregation ways that come from uh, the way we sample, so how many times we sample the client, uh, usually we sample with replacement. And we require that in expectation, uh, this is actually, uh, by definition, has to be equal to the original uh, objective uh, of the aggregation of federated average. And so what they propose in this paper is just to use a multinomial distribution. We can imagine our set of clients here, each of them with their relative weights, so which can be interpreted as a probability of a client to be sampled at a given iteration. And so we, we can pick them, basically sample them from our bucket of clients, and uh, aggregate depending uh, on how many times the client has been selected. And so these are stochastic weight because now they depend on a random process. And uh, they are unbiased because by definition uh, we are sampling them uh, with uh, uh, in expectation the proportion to their probability, so to their weight. But the problem is that now we have something that varies across iterations, so we introduce variance in the process. And this is something that has been observed and is uh, is a, is, a, is a known affect, uh, aspect of, for example, procedure like FedProx with, uh, with sampling, is that uh, federated learning is affected by large variability. And this can impact, actually, the quality of the model, the speed of convergence, and so on. And also, clients are, we don't have guarantee that they are equally uh, represented at a single round. We we'll have only these uh, uh, properties in expectation. So the idea, can we improve, actually, or can we work on this concept, actually, to find better way of representing features and clients during federated learning? And this is one of the work uh, that we have been uh, proposing, and is done uh, by um, Jan Praboni, which is here today, a uh, student that works in collaboration with uh, Accenture. And so the idea is to uh, sample this time, not according to the single probability of the client, but according to uh, in a way that uh, actually we enhance uh, to uh, cluster clients according to similar characteristics. So to enhance the representativity of meaningful things. And so clustering things, you can imagine from a sampling perspective, it means defining a sort of distribution that gives high probability to clients which are similar to being picked at that given uh, sampling procedure. So the idea is that instead of sampling M clients according to a given uh, probability distribution, so the multinomial distribution, we can actually sample according to k or m different uh, distributions, each of them prescribing a given cluster. So we still sample m clients, 
but each, each time we privilege, uh, we, we favor clients uh, which uh, are uh, compatible according to a given, a given uh, probability density function. So this time, instead of having a single uh, set of, uh, uh, of probabilities to sample from, we have uh, basically a matrix, a matrix of selection probability for each of the M distribution, which are the rows, we have a probability of sampling a given client. So this uh, cluster sampling as a problem, as a mathematical problem, becomes uh, formulating a proper uh, sampling rule, so a sampling matrix that describes distribution and clients. And we want to give guarantees, so we want to study this object. And actually there are, there is a, a, there are two conditions we need to prescribe for this to be valid sampling scheme for federated learning, which means being unbiased. First, we want that the sum over the column has to be one, which makes sense because these have to be probabilities, distribution. And, uh, but what we want also is that sum over the row has to be equal to MPI, so number of uh, clients uh, times uh, the, the relative probability. And uh, with these two conditions to be satisfied, we can uh, actually prove that uh, this sampling scheme is unbiased. And what is interesting is that given this new way of sampling things according to different distribution, we can prove that uh, we can bound the variance uh, at the process at this time by the original variance uh, of uh, FETPROX, so the MD, multinomial distribution one. And also, the probability of a client to be represented according to the law that we prescribe is bounded, again, is higher than the uh, original probability of uh, multinomial distribution. So basically, we have a scheme that potentially can give a lower variance and increasing uh, representativity of the clients across iterations. Uh, this makes sense because under the classical assumption of federative learning, sampling, so aggregating according to the sampling scheme can be shown actually to converge to, to a minima across iterations. So this is still compatible with the original federated averaging. And the problem is how to specify this set of conditions. And uh, it is a very complicated problem. They cannot be really optimized. Or the optimization with respect to some uh, cost function is, is, dif is difficult. And so what we, we identified is actually some uh, ideal or some, some, some rules that we can uh, identify with respect to specific condition. For example, what happens if we want to cluster clients according to their sample size? So something which is similar to the original uh, uh, formulation of federated averaging. So we want to give more probability, more ways to clients which have, are more represented. So the scheme is here. Uh, this is an example just to illustrate the basic idea. For example, we have uh, our five clients. Uh, we want to, to sample only three of them at each iteration. And we have 20 data points in total. And uh, basically, uh, so, and this is the sample size of each client. So the idea is to consider basically the problem of filling three buckets, so our three distribution with 20 elements, so the total number of data points that we have. And it is the, if you multiply this uh, quantity by M, the number of cluster, we have basically these uh, uh, balls that we have to assign to all the buckets. And we can start from the, the clients with the largest uh, number of, uh, of data points, and we can start filling the buckets until we empty. Uh, and then we move to the next one, and so on, until we fill out the buckets. And this basically defines our probability distribution in which uh, the first uh, probability will assign weight one, so probability one to sample the client with the largest uh, number of data points, and then we will have a different ratio. So clients are differently represented different with different probability from each of these uh, three buckets the distributions. So we can do the numbers, we can verify that indeed in this way, we verify actually the condition of our theorem. And so actually there is a, there are, the, we can formalize actually this procedure and show that uh, indeed it satisfies uh, the proposition. So it's a valid sampling scheme. And uh, the idea is that what can we build from this actually to find more interesting sampling schemes? And it is to cluster clients according to their similarity. So let's assume that the first uh, round clients are sending their weights and we can aggregate weights together, so using some clustering technique, actually, to find the partitions of our client space according to the similarity of their weights, for example, cosine similarity and so on. 
So we can differ, de define different groups of clients with their own numerosity, with their, uh, that define a partitioning of the space according to a, some similar features. And then we can operate a, a, a scheme like fill in the buckets again according to now to these groups that we have defined in a very similar way that we, de we, we showed before. And we can show that this can lead to a similar actually uh, way of defining the, the sampling distribution, but this time the distribution, they, they favor clients which are similar, so they put the similar clients in the same bucket where we are going to sample them. Again, we can show, we can formalize this, and we can show that uh, if we sample this way, things are fine. It's still a, a valid cluster sampling scheme. And uh, so it's going to, to be compatible with, uh, with the federated uh, averaging procedure. And here is an example of what this means. Uh, so this, uh, this, uh, this is a synthetic example. We took a NIST, uh, we defined 100 clients, and we partition them, so each, uh, of, uh, uh, each digit of a NIST is owned only by 10 clients. So it's represented in 10 clients only. So this is a highly heterogeneous setting because uh, there is an important difference between uh, groups of clients. And then we run, uh, uh, and we, we sample 10 digits at every iteration. So ideally what we would like to do is to every aggregation we want just to sample the relevant uh, clients. So we would like to sample only the clients which are representing different digits. So that we at, at every iteration in the 10 clients we sample, we have the 10 digits represented. But if you imagine like uh, if you sample this uh, in ID or uh, with uh, just a multinomial distribution, uh, well, this is not guaranteed. So we can have clients which are more represented, clients which are not represented. Also, this brings heterogeneity and brings this famous variance. And what we can see is that when we use uh, cluster sampling, so the red based on client similarity, well, we can see that uh, uh, the convergence actually improves and the variability is much decreased, especially after uh, a certain number of, uh, of iteration, because it means that at this point, the cluster that the, the scheme is going to identify are becoming meaningful, so are indeed grouping uh, clients which are similar. So if you compare with the target distribution, so the target scheme, the target scheme is the ideal, so when we sample indeed 10 clients, uh, uh, each of them providing a different digit. So what we would like to do in reality, we see that we are getting very, very close. And uh, the, the, the um, exemplification of what's happening is here. So here we are just quantifying each, each iteration, how many classes we are representing, so how many clients with different digits are sampled. And we can see that with standard uh, multinomial distribution, uh, we are we very rarely actually we are uh, sampling uh, different uh, uh, distributions, so different clients, different digits at every round. While with the, the scheme that we proposed, after uh, the model starts becoming meaningful, clients actually are clustered correctly, and then we guarantee that we sample all the time uh, meaningful actually uh, representatives. And this uh, so ends up in uh, in uh, in better convergence and lower variability. Similar scheme when uh, we work on uh, different data sets, when we generate uh, uh, synthetic partitioning according to, for example, Dirichlet, dis Dirichlet distributions. So from very homo uh, uh, homogeneous to very heterogeneous. So the colors indicate features which are represented for each client. And we can see that when we increase the heterogeneity, uh, with no heterogeneity, basically all the same schemes are the same and the convergence is very similar, but when we increase the heterogeneity, actually algorithm do, two here is the cluster sampling uh, by client similarity, and we can see actually that, uh, again, we improve uh, uh, the quality of the aggregation. And so this was already a first proposal, how to address the heterogeneity from a sampling perspective, so from a statistical perspective, and uh, the nice things is that uh, this scheme provides uh, uh, some nice theoretical uh, guarantees for uh, convergence, variability, representativity, and it doesn't require to change anything about uh, the original uh, uh, federated averaging process. We just change the way we pick the clients. So it's compatible with any possible extension that has been proposed for federated averaging any setup. And uh, of course, uh, this, uh, we provide some ad hoc criteria 
that are compatible with our theory. There might be others that can adapt to different scenarios, so this is an open uh, research. And uh, of course, this uh, in biomedical application, in our case, uh, uh, this is effective, especially when we have a large number of clients, which might not always be the case when we work with a few hospitals. So even in this case, uh, the scenario of application in biomedical application is uh, still has to be uh, perhaps investigated. Or then still dealing with variability. Uh, back to something which is uh, more affin to uh, a, um, a modeling perspective. We propose actually generative models uh, to describe the variability uh, across clients. So this is the work of Irene Balelli, which is a postdoc working in, uh, in our group. So the, the big problem we have when we're dealing with biomedical data is, uh, again, heterogeneity, but of a very specific kind. For many times, features are not even represented in different clients. It might happen that some hospital have some imaging modality, for example, brain imaging. Other, they have some uh, clinical data. Others, they have both but uh, there is uh, this uh, large uh, difference uh, in uh, how things are represented. Missingness is a big issue. And also, there can be specific biases. And again, uh, in our uh, star-shaped network, in our aggregation, dealing with this uh, can become complicated with standard schemes. So what we propose, we can imagine actually uh, a data generation process from a probabilistic perspective. So the idea is that let's imagine that the distribution of the, of the of the models across different clients uh, is, can be described by some sort of uh, statistical law, eh? some probability law. So we can sample a distribution of models that fits actually every client. So basically we have some, uh, something which is, looks like an hyper prior from which we pick actually distribution of parameters. And this describes actually how uh, the data is generated locally. And once we have this law, we can generate the data. And so this is what we observe. So this describes a generative model, a forward model. And uh, as in classical Bayesian paradigm, what we want to do is given the data, we want to infer uh, all the rest. So we want to infer uh, prior, uh, so uh, model weights, and uh, even the, the, the hyper prior in this case. And so we can uh, uh, define a Bayesian network for this, uh, uh, and uh, uh, we can uh, actually start prescribing, actually assigning these objects for, um, for, uh, for, uh, for, for, uh, for distribution for all our quantities. And basically what we can say is that at the server we have uh, some uh, processes, some hyper prior that generate the parameter for every uh, center, K okay, for and then these parameters are used in a generative manner to generate the observation. Here we focus on uh, a latent variable model in which we assume that every client <coughs> has uh, some uh, latent distribution that then is transformed, for example, through a linear transformation to generate the data plus some noise. And the transformation, so how the latent describes the data distribution is specific to the center, to the client. So this is in this way something which is very similar to what is the original Bayesian uh, uh, PCA model, in which actually we also include this coupling term, which is given by the proprietor of the server. And we want actually to infer everything from the data. And this can be actually optimized using expectation maximization, uh, in which, uh, again, we have this alternate optimization procedure, which is very similar to the one which is uh, classical for federated learning in which actually every client uh, 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 updates the, the, the representation of the latent space, so the latent distribution. And then uh, we can optimize uh, uh, with respect to the uh, model parameters, accounting for the priors this time, so we get the maxima posteriori. So somehow the prior acts as a regularization and forces every center not to go too far actually to what is the global distribution. And once we have all the parameters for every client, which are uh, actually estimated, we can uh, send them back to the server, as we do in federated learning, classical, and we can uh, actually update the hyper priors, as we do with the aggregation in federated average. So all this scheme is basically a generalization of standard federated uh, averaging with this regularization term. So in this term, in a sense, you can see it as a, an extension or a Bayesian formulation of what is, for example, FedProx. And this is uh, some uh, example on, uh, on uh, some uh, um, medical imaging and clinical data uh, for uh, um, 
of, uh, of a cohort of patients uh, uh, affected by Alzheimer's disease, it's the ADNI cohort, in which actually we uh, consider uh, uh, healthy individuals and, uh, and, uh, and people with dementia, and each of them, they had a different uh, kind of uh, features uh, attached. So uh, medical imaging, uh, so MRI, FDG-PET, uh, FDG-45, these are all brain imaging modalities which are different, clinical scores. And we considered uh, a, a non-ID representation in which uh, we can uh, actually, uh, certain centers have some diagnosis which is represented, other not, and missing views across the different centers. And what you can see here, for example, is the, uh, the variability the model infers for the latter representation of the different client. So we can see actually how we get uh, this uh, uh, representation of the distribution uh, in the latent space of the, of the clients according to their specificities. And also you can see that uh, uh, the model is able to well, find, identify the distribution of the features at the client side, even accounting for certain clients like here that are missing, for example, the pink one. And uh, since it's a generative model, we can even impute data for clients uh, that uh, had that uh, modality missing. And here you can see actually the reconstruction of the, of the features for uh, a client uh, that didn't uh, uh, did have that, uh, that, that those features at the beginning. So we can use actually for, uh, for uh, create uh, missing information at the client side, leveraging on the information of the other clients. And it can be shown, well, we showed uh, in different experiments that, uh, well, this imputation uh, reconstruction method outperforms uh, uh, well, competit uh, competitors and standard aggregation schemes like federated averaging. But the important thing is that this provides a quantification and some quantification of the uncertainty and the heterogeneity that we have across all the data distribution. So it's a different paradigm for aggregation and, uh, and uh, uncertainty estimation in federated learning, and in a way is uh, a generalization of what the original FedProx, because uh, this coupling term can be seen as a Gaussian prior, hyper prior on the parameters, and uh, what we have is a more complex or uh, more extensive way of uh, specifying coupling terms for parameters. Of course, sharing this kind of uh, generative models uh, raises some privacy issue, uh, because when we can generate things based on other clients' information, uh, we need to ensure that uh, uh, we don't generate things which are too close, or they disclose uh, sensitive uh, information. And um, so we are currently exploring the, the privacy guarantees of, the, of the schemes, and also extending to a more complex model beyond linear. And then to conclude, uh, I just would like to uh, uh, present, uh, so my talk I uh, entitled From Theory to Practice because uh, if it's true from research we're interested in modeling uh, data and uh, while well, accounting for heterogeneity, then when it comes uh, to working with the clinicians, with hospitals, uh, well, we need some uh, practical framework, so software that can be used in these applications. And uh, well, there is a, uh, hi, uh, so it's this, uh, the, 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 the software landscape around federative learning is very dynamic. There are many, many initiatives. This is not uh, a complete list of frameworks which are currently proposed uh, available. And each of them has uh, prof pros and cons. Uh, among the, 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 the most like, notable uh, pitfalls is the, the problem of uh, handling uh, different uh, kind of uh, model of optimization schemes. Uh, being uh, actually uh, uh, not specific to some uh, optimization library or machine learning library, and uh, scalability when we did different clients, accounting for different sampling schemes, different aggregation, uh, and uh, uh, being secured as well. So each of these uh, framework, uh, they, f they, 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 they tick some of this, uh, of this requirement, uh, uh, but they miss some of the others. And uh, it's already a couple of years that we are involved in the development of uh, FedBiomed, which is a, a framework that uh, is uh, currently uh, actively developed in the area for federated learning. Uh, it started as an NRF-funded project two years ago, but uh, rapidly actually became uh, uh, more and more uh, supported. So now we are enjoying uh, uh, support from uh, Troisia. Uh, 
which is the Artificial Intelligence Institute uh, here in France, uh, and uh, from the National Plan for Artificial Intelligence. And uh, Accenture is uh, currently uh, supporting uh, in the development of this, uh, this, this framework. So we have a dedicated development team which is currently working on this. And the idea is that to have something that can be uh, readily and safely used with, uh, for our application in healthcare. So the architecture is basically, uh, well, it's very represented. We have a researcher uh, that can uh, actually prescribe uh, models. And then we have this uh, sort of uh, uh, middle layer, which is uh, a, a third party, which is a, a micro uh, service for, for communication and messaging, which is uh, based on MQT, MQTT uh, messaging paradigm for sending requests and Django for sending, so REST uh, API for, uh, for sending uh, um, model parameters. And on the other side, we have the clients. So it means that the researcher never access the clients, but there is always this mid uh, layer trusted, which also permits to uh, having only outbound communication from clients to researcher through this mid layer, which is something very important when we have to deploy things in hospitals. And uh, everything is dockerized, so it's portable, and uh, the, there is a dedicated VPN for the environment. And uh, so in the node side, uh, what we have, uh, we have uh, this, uh, this local VPN, uh, and uh, we have this uh, interface for actually sharing uh, data sets, which are shared under the paradigm of tags, uh, so that uh, the researcher can query on the other side. And on the researcher side, we work uh, uh, quite extensively on this uh, um, general paradigm for formulating models. Uh, so it's a class uh, based. Uh, so it's a, there is this abstraction in which we have to basically, if you imagine how you would specify a PyTorch uh, model, we have uh, the definition of the model that we have to specify. And then we have a data loader. So basically, this could be done pretty much by copy and paste from original PyTorch models. And then once we define this, which we call a training plan, so the model and the data, we just have to import what we call an experiment in which we need just to specify which tags have to be uh, looked for in the, in the network, and uh, given the arguments for the training and running the experiment, in which we have also the possibility of defining different aggre aggregators or client selection strategies. And then everything is run and uh, federated learning uh, is performed. Actually, currently we support PyTorch and also we uh, are uh, porting uh, uh, scikit-learn part, some of scikit-learn model, which are actually deployable in, within this scheme. But this is very general. So here I show you, this is Santiago Silva, which is a, a, a PhD student that actually performed this uh, experiment with the uh, international, so the different partners. Um, from France, UK, and the US. They were sharing uh, brain imaging data, so neurological application. Uh, different representation of, uh, for example, so quite a high level of heterogeneity uh, in uh, the diagnosis, in the age, and so on. So we train a, a classical variation autoencoder. So what I'm showing here is that the distribution so the, uh, of, the, of, the, um, of the data, for example, at the site, uh, our site, France 1, and we can see that the model discriminates actually between healthy and unhealthy people. So it means the model learns something which is meaningful in this federated learning experiment. And here you can see we measure just some statistic of the aggregations uh, time. And you can see that the center in the US actually was the one taking the longest actually to, to train, which makes sense because we had a uh, network, uh, uh, different conditions in the networks. And this was uh, based on a preliminary version of the, of the algorithm, so it was uh, something that we published last year. We much improved now. So uh, we are currently exploring the possibility and uh, uh, setting up the deployment for uh, this application in neurology based on what we showed before, and also with uh, our clinical uh, partners here in France, uh, notably uh, Olivier Ambert, which is another Troisia chair uh, at the Centre Antoine de la Cassagne, which is an oncology hospital, and partner hospitals. And uh, there is much to do, uh, still, especially concerning the, the privacy and the security aspect, but there is uh, much that can be already done with what uh, we have here. So I invite you, if you are interested, to take a look at our page. It's currently work in progress. It will be much better uh, by the end of the month, but for anything like uh, contacts, uh, information, uh, and 
why not also contributing? We are very open. It's a completely open source project. So to conclude, the federative learning is actually very fascinating uh, and a key uh, domain for uh, actually uh, real life application of machine learning in a sensitive case, especially healthcare, which is the one that concerns me most. It's uh, still we are in an evolving uh, period of paradigm standards. Uh, everything is changing quite rapidly. So it means that uh, it really requires to, to catch up and stay always tuned which is interesting, but it can be also challenging. And uh, also, federative learning in practice is really complex. Uh, it requires a, a huge amount of coordination uh, and re following regulation, uh, interacting with uh, 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 personnel at a very different uh, side, from dev to researcher to clinicians to technicians and so on. So it requires large organization for being, for being uh, actually effectively run. And um, yeah, so I would like to thank uh, all the people that uh, from Iria is uh, currently working with me and which are behind the most, if not all, the results that I show you so far. And uh, I thank you for your attention. Thank you. Thank you. Um, is there any questions? Not online. Yeah, please raise your hand if you have any. Oh. Thanks for uh, the night talk. Um, you mentioned at the beginning these different kinds of heterogeneity and different types of heterogeneity, right, that can occur in practical problems. Can you comment a bit maybe on which kinds you think the two contributions you presented are suitable to tackle and maybe which ones are not? Yeah. So uh, the heterogeneity, when it comes to sampling, the heterogeneity we tackle is a uh, heterogeneity over the model. Part. So for example, the, the, the client sampling uh, that, I, that I showed uh, based on the, on the model similarity. So it's based on the assumption that uh, clients which have similar data distribution, they will have similar model. And so data distribution in this case uh, means, uh, uh, for example, the kind of feature which are represented or even the kind of label. So in the MNISTA, we have a paradigm where we had heterogeneity of labels and so also heterogeneity of features. But this can apply also when we have some drift uh, of, the, of the features, simply same labels, different features, so the model will be different. And so this client sampling based on model sim parameter similarity will still apply. The second uh, uh, paradigm is more related to, since a generative model can deal with missing data, which is another kind of uh, heterogeneity. And since uh, actually we allow this variability of model parameters, can also account for different distribution of the data, for example, how the features are represented, because this will result just in larger variability that the server will see in the distribution, overall distribution of the, of the models. So these are the kind of, uh, of, uh, of, the, of, uh, of um, heterogeneity. We don't deal, for example, with uh, heterogeneity in uh, sample size which actually affects all of this, but uh, in, a, in a different manner. Okay, thank you. So we're running a bit of out of time. So I guess we can thank again the speaker. Thank you very much.